So, the last couple of weeks since the British Grand Prix really seem to have dragged on a bit, haven't they? Maybe it's just because I've spent them taking some time out for myself, meaning I've not really opened F1 Twitter at all since returning from Silverstone. And you know what? Thank f I did. Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to F. P1, the channel that managed to piss off both Max and Lewis stands after the fallout of their little coming together at the last round in Britain. Oh, and also welcome to the comedy review. But you should already know that since it's basically the only thing I upload these days. Approaching the summer break, we still had one more weekend to cover. The Hungarian Grand Prix. Or if you're ex Matty G. Oh my god, Nagadish! Oh my god, Nagadish! And I'm sure 90% of you hardly get that one, but 15 year old me thought it was hilarious, so there you are. Anyway, if this happens to be your first time watching the comedy review, make sure you scroll down a little bit and click on that big red subscribe button if you enjoy, as that really helps me out. We're trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you want to help us get closer to that goal, I'd really appreciate it. So with my plugs out of the way, let's get straight into the comedy review of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Right, so let's get this news segment out of the way, shall we? It's been two weeks since Hashtag Blessed and the Dutch Messiah made contact on lap one of the British Grand Prix. And despite this, the two parties are still acting like f***ing children about it. Red Bull have been promoting their new flavour of energy drink, topped up with extra salts, deciding to have Alex Albon recreate Hamilton's lines during a filming day, so they could use it as new evidence and get the case reopened ahead of the race this weekend. However, frankly, this was unrealistic, given Albon spent the better half of his time in Red Bull in Verstappen's role of spinning backwards into the barrier. And to the shock of pretty much nobody, the FIA told Red Bull to basically go f*** themselves, leading to just more bitching between the team's respective Twitter admins. Now, frankly, I'm bored of the issues. So let's just move on to the actual racing, since that's kind of why you clicked on this video in the first place. FP1 got underway then at the track which is supposedly Monaco without the walls. However, Yuki Tsunoda very nearly found them after spinning off early on in the session. Hopefully, though, this would be the only mistake of his weekend, at a track which he said was one of his favourites. Oh, never mind. Another driver having a spin was two-time champion Fernando Alonso, who dropped it at turn four, but managed to recover with only a little bit of bodywork damage. The Spaniard would become tied with the second most experienced Grand Prix driver this weekend, the same in which he would turn 40, which is an achievement in itself, given that he still hasn't had to consider switching to Formula E yet. Moving back to a form of racing that's actually enjoyable, and it would be Red Bull's Max Verstappen who took top spot in first practice, ahead of the two Mercedes of Bottas and Hamilton the latter of which was not feeling completely comfortable with the car. Meanwhile, Valtteri needed a good weekend, given that the news of his departure from the team was probably the worst kept secret since Lance Stroll's move to his daddy's squad in 2019. His good form, though, would continue into second practice, where the Finn ended the session with the quickest time of anyone. And this is normally where I'd run you through the session, but literally nothing happened. So instead, have five seconds where you can go and click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Sorry, that was bad even for my standards. Let's just move on to FP3 then, and this time it will be Lewis Hamilton on top for Mercedes, eight hundredths of a second quicker than Max Verstappen. And at this point, I want to do something a little bit different on the comedy review, because it's time for Hass Watch. <laughs> you know what, that's probably the highlight of my YouTube career right there. Anyway, this week Nikita Mazepin was being fairly well behaved. Instead, it was Mick Schumacher who tried to reduce the weight of his American slash Russian Formula 1 car by driving it deep into the wall. And that is the end of Hass Watch. Hats off to this guy a while back for suggesting the idea in the first place. So all that was left of Saturday's action was qualifying, and in Q1, the shock exit was Williams driver George Russell, who failed to make it through for only the first time this year. And frankly, this performance was just unacceptable. Like, come on, not being able to get a Williams out of Q1. I mean, just look at Nicholas Latifi. <laughs> Moving on to the second part of quality then, and one team I've not really mentioned so far has been Ferrari, the Italian squad quietly confident given the nature of the Hungarian circuit. Carlos Sainz, however, had other ideas, taking the Mick Schumacher line into the final corner and ending his qualifying in the same way. Daniel Ricciardo also failed to make it through, just being pipped to P10 by ex-teammate Sebastian Vettel. However, sadly for me and all other Ricciardo stands, this isn't much of a shock at this point. 
And that leaves us with Q3 then. And the first set of runs were fairly uneventful, apart from hashtag Bless storming to provisional pole, in a metaphorical middle finger to Max Verstappen and Salty Ball Racing. The second set of runs are typically where all the action is though, and this weekend was no different except it wasn't necessarily due to the lap times. Hashtag Bless decided to turn into Mahavir Ragunathan for his outlap, with Verstappen unable to get his car ahead before his final shot in Q3. With the track also refusing to help drivers find more time in the closing minutes, Hamilton's first lap stood, much to the delight of the Dutch crowd on the main straight. So now it's time for Sunday, and the final race before the summer break, so let's not waste any more time and dive straight into the action. So this race happened to be the first of the year that I partly missed, as I was moving out to my uni accommodation. And so as a result, it had to be the first race since Imola to start in wet conditions. Valtteri Bottas, however, clearly didn't get this memo, breaking as if it was a dry line into turn one and thus turning the Hungarian Grand Prix into Olympics bowling. Bottas inappropriately touched Norris in the rear, who then wiped out the two Red Bulls of Verstappen and Perez. I guess that's one way to keep your seat for next year. All the while, Lance Stroll decided to do the same thing, applying some new aero upgrades to the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, in an incident which also wiped out Daniel Ricciardo as well. The red flags were quickly brought out. However, in the 20 minute break to clear the four stricken cars out of turn one, the track was drying out fast. And when everyone went back out to the grid, it became clear that the dry tyres were actually the way to go. Subsequently, everyone headed into the pits, where Kimi Raikkonen became my driver of the day, for wiping out everyone's favourite rusher. Hashtag blessed and Mercedes, though, had other ideas, choosing to stay out and form a starting grid, which basically acted as a metaphor for F1 from 2014 till this year. This masterstroke of a strategy call didn't particularly work out well, forcing Lewis to pit the next lap and drop to the very back of the order. All of this meant that Esteban Ocon was leading from Sebastian Vettel and the Williams of Nicholas Latifi, making me wonder if perhaps someone had spiked my drinks last night with something from the Russian Olympics team's wardrobe. However, this really was the running order, with Verstappen also at the back, Red Bull pulling another miracle and fixing a large portion of the damage sustained on lap one. And this set us up for a crack of a race, with Lewis carving his way through the field and Max getting more and more frustrated, much to my amusement. By the time lap 20 had rolled around, the Red Bull had only managed to clear Mick Schumacher's Haas and was closing in on Daniel Ricciardo when Hamilton pitted onto the hard compound of tyre. And it was here that we discovered that the undercut was, well to put it bluntly, pretty f powerful. Hamilton was able to jump both Max and Daniel in the pits, giving him clean air to push forward towards the top 10. And while this was going on, Esteban Ocon was delivering the performance of his life up at the front, as Sebastian Vettel tried lap after lap to get past the Frenchman. And after the two races in Austria, I've just got to say fair play to Esteban, and I'm sorry for calling you s a few episodes ago. There was at one point the fear that Lewis could still spoil the party, as his pace as the race went on got quicker and quicker. However, these efforts were thwarted by Alpine's latest rookie driver, a man called Fernando Alonso. Alonso's defensive manoeuvres looked just like the Fernando of old, rather annoying Lewis Hamilton, though let's be honest, that's not the first time he's done that at Hungary before. And though Lewis fought back to third by the flag, Esteban Ocon would end up taking his and Alpine's first victory in Formula 1. And I've got no jokes left here, I'm, I'm just speechless. Further back, both Williams took their first point of the season, which I probably should be hyped about, but uh, all that's directed at Alpine, so sorry lads but that was that then and just what a race the best of a cracking 2021 season so far if you care about my opinions at all mercedes and hamilton now take the lead of both championships heading into the summer break meaning i can't wait to see albon in the filming day recreating bottas's turn one breaking in the next week or so do let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and if you ended up enjoying the video be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for plenty more f1 content to keep you busy over the summer break you can also drop me a follow over on twitter and join our discord community with the links to that down in the description below but for now that's all for me. I'll see you soon for a brand new video, but until then, have a good one.